This is Rural Roots Canada. I'm Craig Lester, getting to the stem and meat of agriculture We're once again in Saskatoon at the Saskatchewan Women in Ag Connect the Heart of the Farm Conference. I've got Rick Block here from the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Rick, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. All right, so Rick, how was it this year in terms of getting crops off the field for that uh, farmers have donated to the Canadian Food Grains Bank? Yeah, in some ways quite varied. The, uh, the year started okay, but uh, with a lot of drought in summer, um, and then really the, the, the big piece was really for probably about five to six weeks, no one was turning a wheel in September. And so you were seeing crop sitting in the field, quality beginning to go down. I mean, fortunately, we did have this little, I guess, push of, of dry weather now in later October. Uh, in fact, all 27 of the growing projects in Saskatchewan were able to be harvested um, and in relatively good condition with, I'd say, overall average to above average yield. So perhaps in the southwest, maybe a little bit lower. And then up in the east and north and northwest parts of the province, uh, uh, quite good. What the, where's this crop going? So yeah, the actual crop that sold um, from years ago, it used to actually be bagged and then shipped overseas. Um, but for quite a few years now, we, we have, uh, I guess, uh, a development model whereby the, the grain is just sold into the bulk system and then the proceeds are, are designated to you know, one or several members of the Food Grains Bank. And so then it's the financial proceeds that are utilized in order to help for emergency food assistance or for some of the work that is more of the long-term ongoing work to build uh, food security. What areas of the world, what countries is this money going towards? Yeah, in terms of emergency food assistance, uh, some of the larger scale um, operations or hotspots would be uh, definitely in around Syria, so Lebanon, uh, Turkey, uh, in around South Sudan, in, certainly in, in refugee camps, so, and South Sudan and DR Congo, so some areas in Central Africa. Uh, and then a third one would definitely be the Rohingya crisis, refugee crisis that is in Bangladesh. Uh, apart from that, a larger or another perhaps part of the work that uh, occupies a decent amount of the, of the overall funds is the conservation ag work, which is actually very exciting, uh, largely centered in East Africa, but also present in other areas, other African nations, as well as um, some in South and Southeast Asia. But East Africa, you, we're seeing literally tens of thousands of farming households um, essentially adopting a conservation agriculture uh, technique or practice which is having really phenomenal results in terms of be being able to grow more and better food. And what kind of advancements are we seeing overseas in regards to being uh, in advancing how food is growing? In areas now in some ways hunger over 30 years has consistently gone down and I think still is on that trend in countries where um, there is, there has been essentially stability, in some ways political stability, and that allows, that allows investments, that allows work to continue on, um, and knowledge to be gained and acquired. In areas where there's instability, we don't see that. But in terms of some of the advancement, um, we really see families in terms of being able to grow more and better food. This means that they are able to feed their household perhaps throughout the year, or if not for a longer portion of the year. Uh, they're able to sell into local markets. Um, we see a lot of, I guess, kind of working together uh, at a certain level, at a community level in, in many countries. Um, what I've seen in Rwanda, for example, is uh, farmers that work together and apart from, or I guess in combination to the conservation agriculture work, they also have, um, essentially it's a, uh, a mini credit union. It's like a, a savings and loan program that they themselves organize and coordinate and it's really a strategy to be able to hedge risk and to be able to at times invest um, in, 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 in something and so they're able to kind of support themselves and in fact perhaps um, attain some dreams that, they, that they're able to or that they do dream of. Tell us a little bit about the initiatives that you have going on here in Canada right now. Yeah, there's, there's varied. I mean, probably one of the biggest ones with the Food Grains Bank is uh, the growing projects, so the agricultural growing projects. There's uh, about 250 of them across the, across the country. Um, a, aside from those, there's many events that both raise awareness and then also resources, funds, to help the Canadian Food Grains Bank. And so you have farm auctions, 
You, and some of them are large auctions. There's one here in Saskatchewan, just north of Saskatoon. There's some in British Columbia and in some of the other provinces as well. There's numerous events that churches, schools, community groups will do, whether that is, you know, it could be like a soup and pie. Uh, it could be, you know, some type of an event. There really are a lot of creative events. It could be a corn maze. Um, and maybe one of the other ones that I'd highlight, and this is initiated by the Food Grains Bank, we do... Um, I mean, we appreciate the, the, the ongoing relationship and, and partnership with the federal government. And we recently had an I Care campaign, which was essentially reminding the Canadian government that Canadians do care about Canada's commitment to international assistance. Uh, we would like to see Canada meet its, uh, its, its targets in terms of its uh, annual budget in, uh, for international assistance. And so recently on uh, World Food Day, we had a Hunger on the Hill event where all food grains supporters and staff we met with numerous MPs and we delivered 8,005 approximately 8,500 postcards uh, to uh, Minister Bebo. Rick anything that you haven't covered or that I haven't asked you that you wanted to add? Oh boy I uh, yeah I kind of went, went I would just really what I would like to say and what I've said in the past before uh, and this goes for really across the country um, I think sometimes we are we maybe aren't always as mindful of the degree of social capital that we have in Canada. It really is phenomenal to see um, many people working together um, from a sense of compassion and generosity. Um, especially farmers. Farmers understand what it's like to be um, in some sense in a bit of a vulnerable, vulnerable position, especially in relation to we just don't know what the weather is going to be like. and. Uh, and yet he, here we have the benefits of, of many risk management strategies and so many times farmers understand the, the scenario that smallholder farmers internationally face. Rick, thanks so much for taking time for us. Okay, thanks so much. We've been talking to Rick Block from the Canadian Food Grains Bank here in Saskatchewan. We're at the Saskatoon, uh, Saskatchewan Women in Ag Conference that connect the heart of the farm. I'm Craig Lester for Rural Roots Canada, Gain to the Stem and Meat of Agriculture.